hello and welcome to the third episode of uh, Island Voices. I'm here at the University of West Indies Renewable Energy Lab with Dr. Lejena Henry. Um, we're going to be talking about OTEC and uh, her background. So nice to see you again. Good to see um, you, Dan. Why don't you tell us a bit about uh, your background? Sure. So I, I'm a mechanical engineer. I studied my first degree at Howard University in Washington, D.C. And then I got a master's in mechanical engineering with a focus on ocean engineering from MIT in Boston. And then completed my PhD at UE St. Augustine in Trinidad, where I started lecturing and then moved to Barbados to lecture renewable energy. And you're also an entrepreneur, founder and yes, CEO of Rum yes. and Sargassum. Yes, so how's that going? That's going great. So Rum and Sargassum is actually a spin-off from UE Cave Hill. Started with results right here in this lab with students like Kishon and, and others, um, where we started a summer wondering what would happen with transportation as Barbados goes to be in 100% renewable energy, fossil fuel free. Most of the cars, there's 121,000 registered driving around gas cars in Barbados. So from the get-go as an engineer, you know, you can't just toss 121,000 gas cars in the garbage by way of sustainability. That's not sustainable. So we kind of put our heads together and came up with a solution where we would produce biogas from a local feedstock and put CNG kits into the gas cars and then drive gas cars on renewable fuel. So that I'm in the process of commercializing that research output from this lab and it's called Raman Sargassum Incorporated. It's a Barbados founded biofuel company, but we hope to impact the whole region with sargassum biofuel fantastic we'll put a link to the website in the in the description of this video yeah. um so tell us a bit about the the wider energy situation not just here sure. in barbados but of of the caribbean yeah sure so right now the entire caribbean is on a path to transitioning to non-fossil fuels and every island has their rates and their timeline barbados is being really ambitious and she's saying we want to be fossil fuel free by 2030 Different countries have rates of um, non-fossil fuel electrification and, and um, power by 2030, by 2050, et cetera. Most Caribbean countries right now pay the highest cost of fuel, the highest cost to drive a kilometer, the highest cost to, to keep the lights so, on. And, but if you compare the cost we pay per kilowatt hour and then compare the average salary in Barbados, you'll see that we pay too much money for mm -hmm. electricity. We pay way too much money to fill up when we're driving. We pay 200 Barbados dollars here to fill up a gas tank, which is the equivalent of 100 US dollars. The cost of living in the Caribbean is high because the cost of bringing energy to tiny islands is high. The shipping costs, most countries in the Caribbean run almost 100% on oil and gas products. Yeah. So in Barbados and most of the Caribbean, we have these things called integrated resource and resilience plans being worked out right now. How do you go from 100% fossil fuel driven to renewable powered? And so for Barbados, what what I see is um, it concerns me when I look at the IRRP now, the current one, because it says something like the country will be near 50 percent powered by solar panels in 2030. And I f find it problematic because we believe in the renewable energy space that a diverse power grid is the most resilient power grid. And so we think there's no one magic bullet, but you should you should really diversify your solutions. We believe in this thing about renewable power is the democratization of energy. And so you see the spread instead of power centers. Right now in a world where mm -hmm. there's power centers around fossil yeah. fuels, we're saying there should be more of a spread of who, who benefits from it, even financially, yeah. but also that it should benefit each location. So I don't think the answer for renewable energy for Barbados is a carbon copy of what it is for Trinidad mm -hmm. or what it is for Grenada. Mm -hmm. I think for each location, there are different resources, different constraints, different population, different needs. Barbados has a gas grid, for example. And so my renewable energy work in bioenergy tells me that gas grid should be filled with biogas. Mm -hmm. um, Trinidad doesn't have a gas grid like that. And I think the solutions there would be different. Yeah. Um, so little things like that. I think for each island, yes, we all sound the same. We have the same great food, but no, we're not all carbon copies. <laughs> and so for each island, you're going to have to really 
go in there and figure out what what is the need here what is the culture like what is the technology already on the ground how can we sustainably transition mm -hmm. and so i think raman tagasam is going to play an important role in the, the, the national conversations for our islands in terms of that energy transition and the approach to mm -hmm. the energy transition amazing so just taking us a, a step back so mm -hmm. with lots of things you've identified there about the need for I guess, culturally sensitive, since mm -hmm. appropriate technologies. Right. But how did, what inspired you um, to get into renewable energy and make that the such a focus of your career? Right. So I grew up in a Trinidad that was industrialized, but we still had the ocean. We were still a tropical island. And I think all of those different moving parts in my childhood led me to a point of wanting to find energy solutions in the Caribbean Sea. Yeah. And um, I think if you look at my publications over the years, you'll see this um, North Star where it's like, what, what, what do we have? How can we optimize that to move towards renewable energy? And so the name of the company is Raman Sargassum, and it's funny. So some people love the name, some people hate the name. But I think the spirit of the name Raman Sargassum is these are things we have. Mm. These are things that we've... Um, our history and our culture brought us these things and we're going to find a solution in these things and um i think yes we i mean we do have um challenges as small island development states but i think in in the middle of the challenges we're creative people we're resourceful people mm -hmm. we're bright and i think we have what it takes inside of us to to, to come to needed solutions. I love that. And for what it's worth, I love the name Rum and Sargasm. So <laughs> if some guys in Europe are telling you that it's a bad name, don't pay any attention to them. Um, so what is it particularly about OTEC that you see as fitting mm -hmm. in considering the sensitivities of Caribbean islands? Right, great. So OTEC, I think, is just this natural base load supply just sitting out there. Mm. All it is is deep, cold, cold water, deep, cold water warm surface water um i think and, and i guess um you would have read a lot of kashan's work and i agree with everything written in kashan's work because he has to send it to me to vet mm -hmm. before he sends it out there anyway and what we say is we have some of the highest delta t's in the world mm -hmm. and we do have huge coastal developments we have coastal hotels many of the caribbean countries run on tourists and beaches in hotels on beaches yeah. tourists in beaches in hotels on beaches and so optimizing energy outputs from otec systems or SWAC too which is like the reverse of otec yeah all that resource is a real resource that nobody knows about like nobody's heard about it and so i think we need to get um we need to get there and get and get tap into that resource for sure but we also need to get the public aware of it mm. because i mean right now in the world if you think about it japan hawaii the places where otec is experimental but it has shown that it works yes they Proven don't have the same exactly they don't have the same delta t as us no um we don't need to go down to a thousand or two thousand meters to get no. that delta t you could get it at 800 meters mm -hmm. in some places mm -hmm. and so economically it works well here um i think beyond that is back to the thinking of like what do we have and how can we make the best of it if mm. we use otec in the caribbean we could definitely use the deep water resources for um basically aquaculture at the yeah. surface and even bolster a solution like the yeah. rum and sargassum solution so all in all i think otec is a great idea I think it could cover base load in many of our small islands with small populations. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to agree with what was said earlier that we need to have Caribbean kind of cross, like within CARICOM, yeah. we need to have these kinds of- Regional cross-cutting themes between- th yeah, yeah, between the different nations to get OTEC up and running. Um, yeah. But I think it will answer some of the other issues too, as we work together towards solutions yeah. um, and come up, go past these barriers, these exclusive economic zones and come together. Um, one last thing I'll say is 
fisheries. So fisheries yes. is a big industry in our marine space, and it's been the, the industry there. We get a lot of insight from fisheries, even in the energy space. Um, so I respect the, the existence of fishers and, and fisheries, and they've been a big resource to me in, in the work, the marine biofuel work. But I would say for us as countries, we have to look past thinking of the blue space as for tourism and fisheries and think about it also as a huge resource of much of the economic stimulation we need in our islands. So. Yeah. I, I, it always strikes me that you know, the public buying is sometimes hard for new technologies, but when you point out that the largest natural resource that an island owns is being used for some scuba diving, snorkeling and some and some fishing, yeah. it's, it's such a missed opportunity yeah. that you're then importing so much of your energy from right. the richest petro states. So the Caribbean is mainly different European um, imperial empires yeah. brought people and resources here with European um, site of the world. Yes. Um, people came across from the continent, from Africa, from India, with continental approaches to life. But we're here on these islands, and I think we've lived on the islands as tiny non-continents for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. But now we have to start living like citizens of large ocean states. And so we have to make that transition in our understanding, but also in the practices, the culture, the economics, everything. Because if you think about it, Barbados is just one third the size of Switzerland. When you look at Barbados as its exclusive ex yeah. economic zone and all the resources in there, this this could be just like Switzerland. And so can we start thinking that way? Yeah. And I think this energy transition and, and resources like OTEC will, will guide all our people towards that kind of thinking. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Yeah, Henry. Thank you. Thank you.